Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Council's extraordinary meeting on the 17th of January, 2023. Hawkesbury City Council acknowledges the Darug and Darkinjung people as the traditional custodians of the land of the Hawkesbury. We pay respect to all elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples as the first peoples of the country. I'll now hand over to the General Manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Members of the public attending the meeting are advised that in the event of an emergency, you'll be asked to proceed in an orderly manner to the nearest exit following the guidance of our warden. I would also like to advise that in accordance with Clause 5.33 of the Code of Meeting Practice, Council's uh, meetings are recorded. In the terms of the Privacy and Personal Information Protection Act, this may involve the recording of personal information provided at the time of the meeting. The recordings are made to assist staff in compiling the minutes of the meeting and to enable the podcasting of Council's meetings. The provision of any information that is recorded is voluntary. If any person does not wish to be recorded, they should not address or request to address the meeting. The recordings may be made available to other persons where such access is in accordance with the relevant regulations. The recordings are stored on Council's record management system. Meetings of the Council may be separately recorded with the prior authority of the Council. For the benefit of those persons who will be addressing the council tonight, it is expected that you will refrain from making any insult, allegation or personal reflection against any person present or not at this meeting. This request relates to both your address to council and any answers given in response to questions from councillors. Finally, it is also requested that any person participating in or attending the meeting this evening has a mobile phone. Um, please turn it off or switch it to silent. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, General Manager. Uh, we do have one apology and one leave of absence this evening. Our apology comes from Councillor Eddie Dogramachi, and our leave of, uh, sorry, attendance by audio visual link uh, comes from Councillor Jurek. <clears throat> I'll just read out a request because we do have to vote on Councillor Jurek's participation tonight. The General Manager received from Councillor Jurek a written request to attend tonight's extraordinary meeting by audio visual link as he is out of the Hawkesbury area until the 19th of January. Councillor Jurek has been admitted to the meeting and is unable to participate until Council decides by resolution whether to accept his request. Does someone want to move that Councillor Jurek be permitted to attend the Extraordinary Council meeting on the 17th of January 2023 by audiovisual link as he is out of the Hawkesbury area? Councillor Reardon, Councillor Connolly, uh, all in favour? Thank you, that's carried. Councillor Jurek, you are able to participate. Any declarations of interest tonight? No, thank you, councillors. Uh, I will just before we start uh, say that we do have two additional council uh, staff here tonight, uh, Christopher Amet and Jackie Carr, who are filling in for the Director of Infrastructure in his absence. Okay, we have one item on the agenda for this evening. That is a notice of motion, item number one. We have three registered public speakers for that motion. And I will call on our first speaker, Michael Morris. Councillors, um, tonight I am speaking as a family member impacted by the tragedy of drowning and as a long-term advocate for drowning prevention and a, me and a member of our community aware of a significant drowning risk in our area. In 2006, my son Samuel experienced a non-fatal drowning accident and a very catastrophic brain injury as a result of that. Samuel survived for eight years, uh, dealing with the complications and disabilities associated with this drowning accident. And since then, I've been working uh, in nonprofit supporting both fatal and non-drowning uh, victims and their families, and have worked extensively with Royal Life Saving on national drowning prevention campaigns. And I remain a member of their research advisory group. However, I need to be clear that I'm not speaking on behalf of either organisation tonight but as a family member. I commend Council for engaging the Royal Life Saving Society Australia and encourage the continued engagement with that organisation. Royal Life Saving is a rich source of advice. However, I need to point out in this circumstance that Council is the risk holder, being the owner and manager of the location in question. And Council cannot rely solely on the advice and recommendations from Royal Life Saving and must conduct a strategic risk assessment to both the local community and visitors to Macquarie Park and the potential impacts on council in the event of legal action following a drowning death or injury at this site. In a 10 year review between 2005 and 2015 of drowning deaths in the Hawkesbury River, Royal Life Saving found that over one quarter of all drowning deaths occurred at Windsor. 
This is a river of over 100 kilometres in length and one quarter of the deaths occurred at Windsor. We know that there have been uh, numerous other fatalities at that site, including the two recent deaths that have occurred since 2015. Swimming and recreating are key contributors to drowning deaths in the Hawkesbury River, particularly at Windsor Beach. However, as I've mentioned, deaths are not the only issue. For nationally, for every fatal drowning of incident, there are another three cases of non-fatal drowning recorded. And people who survive drowning incidents may experience long-term health complications or life-changing injuries, like those experienced by my family. Tragically, non-fatal drowning impacts more and more individuals, families and communities every year. And between 2002 and 2017, cases of non-fatal drowning increased by 50%. It is human nature that people will take risks and certain segments of the population are likely to continue swimming at high risk locations. We see this through continued drownings at unpatrolled beaches nationally. While banning, while banning swimming at this location would make sense, it is, practic is not practically feasible unless there is an ongoing enforcement effort. And I suggest there is no current enforcement in relation to the section 632 of the Local Government Act referenced on existing signage. Existing signage at Macquarie Park is misleading, it's confusing, and it's overwhelming, and it assumes English proficiency. Language such as the use of this facility may be hazardous downplays the risk by not explicitly identifying the risk of death or injury for anyone swimming. It, didn't, it does not include the standard symbology for drowning risk, and it suggests that only unsupervised children have drowned at the site. My recommendations to council in supporting this motion are that I support the motion seeking to increase signage at the location and surrounds. However, given the failure of existing treatment options, including the misleading nature of existing signage, it does not make sense to install more signs of the same type, even if additional languages are included. Drowning prevention strategies will need to be targeted and specific, noting differences in local environment and communities. It may be argued that the existing signage is best practice. However, best practice only reflects the best of current practice. Accordingly, I urge council to think more strategically about the risk and ways of discouraging swimming activities at Windsor Beach. I urge council to be explicit on signage, such, using language such as, there is a significant risk of death or injury when swimming at this site. And I also urge council to include explicit information on the signage regarding the number of fatalities that have occurred at the site. Signage should continue to use the symbology contained in the national standards as recommended by Royal Lifesaving. It should include the symbology for drowning risk and it should consolidate the other risks. This provides real information for people to consider when determining their own risk tolerance. Council should embrace and as necessary, tailor the messages of Royal Lifesaving's Respect the River program where required to ensure individualized solutions which target local problems. Public awareness campaigns are needed to target high-risk populations, including males, young and middle-aged adults, as well as tailoring the safety messages to particular age groups, culturally appropriate resources need to be developed to ensure optimal acceptability with the target demographics. Council should consider the methods for deploying safety messages at times of a heightened risk. As I said, I commend uh, the motion to council with those additional recommendations, and I thank council for the opportunity to address council on this important public safety issue. Thank you, Mr. Morris. Are there any questions for Mr. Morris? Thank you, Councillor Sheva. Thanks, Madam Mayor. <coughs> Mr. Morris, um, <clears throat> I've been involved in um, coroner's outcomes mm -hmm. and the like, um, water screen mainly. Um, <coughs> we, we, um, and, and thanks for going to the trouble that you have. <coughs> But there's a bit of assumption, I guess, in, in the way you spoke, that there's an issue in relation to the activity uh, there. And I don't know that that's a problem. It could be a, both accidents recently could have been health episodes. I, I don't know. Uh, I did try to find out. <clears throat> um, and I take on board, the, you, you, you know, the signage and the like. Um, the... With with the discussion you had, do you do you, do you feel that if it was a health issue that that created the incident, and they just happened to be in the water when that happened, um, that that um, that signage would would prevent the other activities that you, that you uh, were referring to? 
uh, if we had adequate signage that discouraged people from undertaking risky activities in a known high risk environment, then the fact that they've got an underlying medical condition would be irrelevant. Yeah. Uh, and in considering what I did have to say uh, was consideration of the time constraints rather than delving into the details of the research of which I'm aware uh, and which Royal Life Saving Society would in, be in an expert condition uh, to supply to council staff. Thank you, Councillor Sheetha. And any further questions? Oh, Councillor Lyons Bucket. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Mr. Morris, for generosity and sharing your personal story. Um, are you able to direct us then to any other examples of specific signage you've maybe come across that's mm. outside of the standard Royal Life Saving uh, signs that I know they have on their website? Do you know of any of those? Yeah, there are a number of existing uh, examples internationally with signs for a particular site. Sorry, there are a number of sites uh, internationally that do provide specific information such as X number of people have drowned in this location um, or the fact that there is a very explicit risk. I'm happy to provide those by email if you'd like some examples. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. If that's all, we thank you for your contribution, thank Mr you. Morris. I now call on our second registered speaker, Bill Snedden. Thanks, Bill. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor and Councillors. Uh, I'm speaking today in full support of tonight's motion regarding warning signs at Macquarie Park for swimmers. This is again on Council's agenda. I've heard of it at least two times, one only about two or three years ago. Uh, and again, the signs that have gone up have just been blur, 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 largely. They are not explicit enough, and I agree with everything that was said by the previous speaker who I've never met. Uh, I've been shocked by the lack of knowledge of uh, uh, displayed by local citizens regarding the hazards of swimming uh, in inland waterways, and particularly regarding the two recent events, let alone the one up at Col uh, Colo uh, just relatively recently. Um, all I can say is truly still waters run deep, and that's what our inland waterways do. Uh, another saying, a Russian one is quiet flows are on. In other words, there's a deep current, uh, but a smooth top, and it's very deceptive. Um, for many years, I've, I've heard of the hazards of rivers to swimmers. Knowledge I took as universal, at least to inland Australians read locally. Um, it's been about for, for many years, not that I specifically learned it as, as a youngster uh, on beaches at Newcastle. The still waters at the river's edge are deceptively dangerous for the, the, the unwary and the uneducated. The hazards are different to surf beaches where I grew up. Narrow walkways at the river's edge, for example. Potential for crumbly uh, underwater footing due to different sedimentation uh, compared to sandy beaches and deposition compared. Uh, to such likes. Uh, potential for steep drop aways close to the water's edge, sometimes near vertical and soft slippery footing also uh, uh, gives you a, a very poor footing and it can happen within milliseconds. One foot's fine, the next foot you're gone. Uh, Non-uniform contours along the shoreline, um, along the waterline. Um, uh, on big sandy beaches at the ocean, you're used to lots of area. Along, You walk along any of our, ri uh, our river, river frontages here and it can vary from, from a couple of metres to suddenly almost nothing in front of you. Uh, so it can be lethal. Potential for strong undercurrents are, are close to the waterline, are hidden by the, by the calm surface waters. Deep water flows are often quite cold, leading to thermal shock if unexpectedly uh, entering the water. If you slip in and you go in, thermal shock can actually just freeze you solid and you just go under, not a sound, unable to move. It's the sort of thing that happens if you ditch in the North Sea on a helicopter flying to an oil rig. Uh, under those circumstances, you might have a minute if you're lucky. Authorities advise water users inland should probe along the water line with a stick or something to, uh, uh, lengthy to determine the depth and the dropouts before starting to swim or even paddle at the water's ledge. I've never seen this done at Windsor. People simply assume it is okay uh, and safe. There are signs up there, so it must be ipso facto. I grew up with ocean beach culture in Newcastle and realise inland waterways, including dams, dams kill many little kids, have, have additional hazards. Workplace OH&S, if that was uh, your, your people were taken down there, would have all of these areas fully fenced off. I don't think you could pay the insurance politely. And certainly if I was in a factory, 
uh, um, uh, the places that I work at, those would be fenced off and, and probably possibly even with barbed wire. Macquarie Park waterfront is not a safe patrol beach, as the seafront bathers understand the term beach to mean. Users and locals have expressed surprise also to me, but there are no lifesavers as on surf beaches or the need for a buddy when you go swimming. Uh, we've had a number of drownings recently, not along the inland waterways, but around Sydney, where single people have been floating face down. You go swimming with a buddy, the same as in, uh, in dangerous workplaces or scuba diving. If something happens to you, you have a heart attack or a stroke and you go face down, at least there's some way, someone to, to pull you out or, 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 or call for help. If you're on your own, you're gone. We also need to be aware that humans are not instinctively able to swim, as are most animals. Many Australians grew up near water and were taught to swim, as I was. However, this is not universal worldwide. I've seen estimates that at least 50% of the world's population never learned to swim. And the big quoted example uh, is Africa, where there are many people that live along rivers, but they never learn to swim, let alone people that live in a desert that never seen a large body of water. Uh, new citizens and, and tourists in Windsor cannot be expected to be swimmers or to have the water safety knowledge and education us older citizens have. I can quite safely tell you that in high school, I went to what we kids used to call drowning lessons. I'm a poor swimmer. I didn't manage to get a bronze medallion, uh, but I can keep my head above water for a little while. Um, but as a result of some of this, we've seen the results recently. The Colo River few years ago, Yarramundi, there's been a number of incidents down there. And I know there's been people fished out that didn't drown, but we've also had people go into turbulent and, and, and dangerous waters and, and boats overturned. And those rapids down there, as, a, as at Penrith, are also potentially lethal. Uh, we've all, and then we have, have we've had the, two, the incidents at Macquarie Park just recently. And there are more on other inland waterways over the holidays and at uncontrolled surf beaches. All of this is tragic. And authorities, I keep hearing on the news are tearing their hair out. We've got to start treating this as really serious. The science that we have just aren't adequate to express what's going on. Also, we need to stop calling our river fronts beaches. Ocean beach users don't understand the risks involved. Now, why am I speaking tonight? In 1989, just before a, a Christmas, um, my family and I went to a Christmas party for uh, nursing mothers out at Pitt Town. It's now called Breastfeeding Association. My two and a half year old was jumping into blue water with some nice floaties on her arm. Come dinner time, all the kids were called out and uh, they, uh, they they went off to get dinner. Um, I was still in the pool. I can't remember quite why, but I was a straggler. As I was in the pool, I bumped up and about to get out, I bumped into something. I looked down and here was my two and a half year old, sans floaties, floating face down, cyano blue. Fortunately, I grabbed her. I put her in a bean bag. She was frothing. I tried to feel for a pulse. All I could feel was mine, doing about 150. Uh, fortunately, uh, I tried a little bit of uh, chest compression, cleared her waterways, and she cried, and she started coming around. Now, of about 60 people there, I would have thought there would have been some medical people. If I hadn't have pulled her out, nobody else knew what to do. I have a vested interest in this. Now, whether or not my daughter's slight hearing loss is related to that near-drowning incident, I don't know. The medical people haven't been able to say. But I really want you to do something. I've even had a couple of people citizens here say we should have some signs on 200 litre drums or similar moored in the middle of the river opposite what's now being called Macquarie Beach. Please, as this motion says, stop calling them beaches. They're not beaches. It's a very dangerous uh, uh, misattribution uh, to do that. Uh, it lulls people into a full sense of uh, security. Uh, also, if you've studied geography, you understand the shifting natures of, of the rivers, etc. What can be a safe location today can have a hole washed in the side of, of, of what used to be a three or four metre wide expanse to, by tomorrow. That's why you're supposed to go and probe with a stick so that you know you have safe footing when you're going to use that little bit. And you don't go away from there unless you reprobe where you're going. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Snedden. Is there any questions from councillors? No, thank you very much for your contribution. Thank you. Thank you. Our third registered public speaker is Madeline Hilly. I believe we were trying to get a hold of her on Zoom. I'm just checking with staff. 
Oh, there she is. She's online. Can you hear me, Madeline? You just have to take yourself off mute. <laughs> Hi, how are you going, everyone? Hi, Madeline. Um, thank you. Over to you. No worries. Thank you. Um, thank you for having me today. Sorry I couldn't be there in person. I'm actually away on holidays, but um, being here online shows how important this is despite me being away on holidays. Um, so I just want to give you a bit of my background as to my passion about making sure that this area becomes a safe space for people to swim at. Um, I'm, I'm pro swimming, but obviously if we're going to um, not necessarily encourage people to swim, but we, we're on the understanding that humans will do things that we don't want them to do. So we need to make sure that they're aware of the risk when they're doing it. Um, so about two years um, almost to date, I actually helped rescue four people from drowning at the river. Um, I One take home for me was that I actually went to the river with my husband and two friends, um, two of which don't know how to swim one who is a very weak swimmer at best um, we actually saw uh, some people flailing in the water um, needing a hand um, me being a, the only swimmer of the four that I went with obviously dove straight in to help um, so that was one take home I went with people who didn't know how to swim so I myself didn't know the risk um, I then um I went for the two boys first. There was two boys and two men. Um, the smallest of the boy that I helped out um, was in such chaos that he actually pushed me underwater. Um, thankfully, the second take home, I actually have my swim safety training. So I knew then at that point to actually correct the way that I was pulling him out of the water so that he couldn't push me underwater. Um, had I not had that skill, um, that event could have been fatal, not only for the boy, but for myself as well. Um, so I, I got two of the boys into the water. The first man, um, someone on a paddleboard was close enough to be able to assist the man. The last man that I rescued, he was actually submerged in the water um, by the time I reached him. And um, thankfully, when I put my head under the water where I suspected he was. I was actually, I was only able to see his forearm up. So I couldn't see any other part of his body at that point below the surface. Um, so another take home three was putting myself at risk again, because obviously if I'm di ducking under the water, there's undercurrents and things again. So again, a, a risky exercise for me, which I didn't know at the time. Um, and I was able to pull him to the surface and, um, yeah, rescued the, the last man. Um, and again, had I not had that swim safety training, um, that last man would, man would have definitely pulled me below the surface, which would have been a critical um, day for me. Thankfully of that incident, um, obviously that was a great outcome. No one was hurt. Um, I, I also have my first aid certificate. So once we got everyone to shore, I made sure they were in the recovery position until we waited for the ambulance to arrive, just make sure they were um, not swallowing any more water and they were laying comfortably to lower their heart rate. Um, so, so yeah, that was another good thing that I had my first aid certificate. No one else on the beach did at that point. Um, one thing which aided that experience was that that there was that one person with a paddleboard at the river. Um, had we not had, had that buoyancy device, um, by the time I reached the last person to pull him in, I was pretty exhausted. And I mean, they were only 15 metres offshore. It's not a great distance, um, but, you know, doing one person after the other it is quite tiresome. Um, so a buoyancy device was, um, that was, yeah, I can't explain how detrimental that was to that incident. Um, also for the people who were with me who weren't able to swim, had we had at that time, that was prior to the, the now um, buoyancy device that is available, had we had a buoyancy device at the time, they could have actually assisted in that um, experience, but they just had to stand back and watch, which was quite terrifying. Um, but also one thing, to note as well, um, after that incident, 
there was nothing in the media about what had occurred. Um, you know, they, this was a near death incident. Um, it was quite traumatic for myself and I'm sure it was for the, the people I rescued as well. Um, to the point I had counselling as well for that incident. Um, but there was no media coverage. There was nothing in the news. Um, I know the, the ambulance came down. So I don't know whether there would be a record in the ambulance um, notes. But it goes to show that how many other near misses at the river are we not accounting for? Now, um, they, they were not medical episodes. These people just didn't know the risk the river presented and they thought it was a nice day to go out and have a, you know, a paddle on the shore. Um, like the previous bloke mentioned, people don't realise that that shoreline drops off quite quickly. Um, so, yeah, yeah, it could have been a much worse incident. But the fact that there was no media or any coverage like that, yeah, it just makes me very wonder how many more incidences are we not aware of? Um, and the same with um, someone who I've actually connected with on this matter is Liz Pratt. I don't know, some people may or may not have heard of Liz. She actually helped um, or she tried to revive someone who sadly passed away at the river. Um, and again, that was only in the media because Liz um, presented herself to the media. So how many more incidences are we not um, aware of? So yeah, buoyancy devices are key. Um, signage, um, I know that there was a university, university lecturer in 2018 who actually did a study on national park signage and how it can save lives if it's done well. Um, so I, I do recommend perhaps we talk to that professor and see if there's a take home we can take from the national park signage that they've redone there because it would be of similar nature. It's not necessarily more signage, it's um, well-appointed signage and it's clear signage to, so people know the risks. Um, yeah, if there's any questions, let me know or if there's any um, anything I can add, yeah, let me know. Thank you so much for that, uh, Madeline. Is there any questions from the councillors? No, and thank you. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I've got to remember to look at our councillor uh, online as well. Uh, councillor Jurig. Thank you. And thanks, Madeline. Um, I just wanted to ask, in your experience, would you say that the issue in that situation was poor swimmers uh, not knowing that uh, the banks dropped off steeply? Um, without knowing them, um, my assumption was that the two boys were playing on the water's edge and they went under and the, the two men went after them and none of, none of the four were able to swim. So people just assume it's a nice place that you can dip your toes into, um, not realising that it's, yeah, they, people, like the previous speaker said, it's not like a beach. People don't realise it doesn't just, you know, there's a quite a steep drop off there. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I appreciate the perspective. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor. And I will just thank Madeline. She has been in touch with us uh, since her experience and your advocacy is very welcome. Thank you, Madeline. Thank you, Madeline. Uh, okay. Thank you. So we will move on to... Item number one, warning signs and swimming safety in Macquarie Park. Uh, I will just say before we begin to, to de debate today, uh, please remember this is a very sensitive topic. Uh, we still have families who are grieving at this point in time and let's keep our debate respectful. Over to you, Councillor Wheeler. Um, thanks, Madam Mayor. I'll move the um, motion in the business paper. Second that, Madam Mayor. Um, thank you. Um, firstly, I, I want to acknowledge um, that, that we're, we're having this extraordinary meeting because we um, because two men died um, in the in the last month at, at Windsor Beach. Um, I, I won't name them because I don't have permission from their families to use their names. Um, but I do want to acknowledge that um, that people are really grieving uh, for for the loss of of these members of their of their family and um, and friends. Um, I also want to acknowledge um, that our speakers, all of whom have related traumatic incidents um, that have shaped their views on this topic. Um, and I want to acknowledge that it's very difficult to come into a public forum and, and have that discussion. Um, as a, and I want to acknowledge your, um, your selflessness in sharing your stories in the hope of improving this situation. This is an ongoing issue. Um, 
at this beach. In fact, someone sent me um, a newspaper clipping that's 106 years old where council met to discuss um, cases of drowning that have that have occurred um, at um, at this site and the coroner's report that that asked for council to act um, and mm -hmm. the councillors were of the opinion that they couldn't do anything that's 106 years ago um, this is this is not a new thing this is this is something that that um, that several of us who were on council in 2018 attempted to address we can see from the numbers of drowning since that that hasn't been successful uh, and I think um, Madeline Hilly's point that what we know what we know are the reports of people who have drowned not the people who have had near misses and we also have as um, Mr Morris has raised we don't have any record of the people who have been injured at that site and who are living with the results of that of those injuries. Um, I think I'm I'm cognizant of the fact that we have been in touch with Royal Life Saving, and that was certainly um, one of the the aims from the previous um, motion in 2018. I've looked at the Royal Life Saving Society's messaging, and much of it assumes that people know what they're getting into, or that they that there is some means of working out what the conditions are like when they get there. So it, the, the Royal Life Saving Society's messaging is around knowing the conditions. That's really difficult. Somewhere like Windsor, this isn't a sanctioned swimming spot. Most of the problems aren't visible, as um, and and we don't we don't publish swimming conditions information. It says to wear a life jacket. Now that means adults as well, um, and it's usually only done by people who are boating. It's very rarely done. By people who are swimming in the river. I know every time I drive over that bridge on a warm day, I look down, there's a stack of people in the river and no one has a life jacket on. Um, don't go in alone. They're not alone. These people who these people who are succumbing to the river are not alone. They are surrounded by people. Um, you've heard from from Miss Hilly how difficult it is and how dangerous it is to rescue somebody. So not swimming alone isn't working either. And and to supervise children. It's not kids who are drowning. Um, avoid alcohol. Again, there's a false sense of security that if you're an adult and you're not drunk, you're going to be fine. Um, now, there's no mention of, um, of heat, which can make you even more vague um, or, or less capable of making a decent decision than, than when you're drunk. Um, but many of the people who get into difficulty here are sober. Um, we're talking about a river that's ranked number five in the list of most dangerous waterways in Australia. Royal Life Saving, the Royal Life Saving, Saving Society rec, ranked Windsor as the second worst spot for drowning in New South Wales. Ian Wright from Western Sydney University calls swimming at Macquarie Park a huge act of faith, just due to the water quality issues, not due to the drowning issues. We've had five drownings in the last six years and more than 90 drownings recorded at this site. We can't stop people swimming in the river. Um, what we can do, though, is acknowledge as the managers of Macquarie Park, as the risk holders, as Mr Morris has pointed out, that council has a responsibility to inform anyone who accesses this site um, that it's extremely dangerous to swim here. We can't block access to the river because it's used quite reasonably by kayakers and, um, and, and people on other watercraft. So clear, concise signage is our best option. We need to be really blunt and direct. The current signage, while informative about the nature and the causes of the risk, is not commensurate with the level of risk. There will always be risk takers. We can't stop them, but we can make sure that those who just think that this is a nice spot to cool off make better choices. That's why I'm calling for an education campaign for Hawkesbury residents, but also for people living in the hills and Blacktown who come here because it's closer than coastal beaches and it looks like an innocent spot. We know, we know that it's not. But the people who, who come from surrounding suburbs don't know that. It's bad enough that our own local people don't know that. But for people, I've, I've been contacted by people, um, many people from the hills, saying that they're shocked, in fact, to find that this wasn't a great swimming spot. I've had people contact me asking about water quality um, and, and are shocked to find that there are sewage treatment out, outfalls um, up um, upstream of this spot. People don't understand the hazards here and it's up to us 
as the managers of that site to make these hazards really clear. Now we can put up nice yellow signs that say, that have all the information on it that people might stop and read if they've got nothing else to do. But what we really need is signs that smack you in the face as you come into the park that say, danger, do not swim here. Or danger, swimming here is extremely risky. X number of people have drowned. That, and we need to get that message out. Probably, um, but perhaps we do it through WESROC, perhaps we do it through our surrounding councils, but we need to get that message out to people. We need to stop the use of the term Windsor Beach on any of council's information, unless it's to say, this is not a beach, or this is not, Windsor Beach is not a safe place to swim. Otherwise, no pinpointing of Windsor Beach. We need to contact those organisations like Google Maps, uh, like various <laughs> tourism boards, the Hawkesbury Gazette has done it, referring to this as Windsor Beach. It's really dangerous. People are dying. I do, I, there is nothing else that we have that is that it, that we have control over that has direct impact on life and death in the way this park does, and we need to act like it's that important. Thank you very much, Councillor Wheeler. I'm just checking you have concluded. Yes. Sorry, yes, no, great, thank you. Councillor Collash. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I would like to start by saying, and um, well, thanking our speakers um, for tonight, that uh, their the, um, contribution has been really important and um, very generous. And I'd also like to thank um, Councillor Wheeler for bringing this um, to us. I have, um, today I sent around um, some points that I wouldn't mind changing in this notice of motion to maybe um, address some of the um, concerns that we've heard. Um, and I was just wondering if Councillor Wheeler um, had um, taken any of the those points on board and is willing to um, to um, include those in her motion. Um, I've. I've didn't receive them until later this afternoon. Um, I'm. I feel that they water down um, the motion to a degree. Um, I, I don't want this to be um, a, a difficult debate in the chamber. Um, if it if it's helpful, I'm happy to move a procedural motion that moves us into committee of the whole, so that we can look um, at Councillor Cotlash's suggestions and come to a consensus position um, based on. Um, on what we all think um, will work, and certainly on the suggestions. I think we've had a couple of suggestions in particular from the speakers that, that may be um, helpful additions um, or clarifications to the motion. Um, so if if that um, if you feel that's appropriate, Madam Mayor, I'll move that procedural motion. I think I need a seconder for that. Councillor Beigel, um, all those in favour? Thank you, Carrie. We'll move into um, Committee of the Whole. Oh, sorry. Councillor Colash, if you uh, well, so basically now we can sort of talk amongst ourselves. There's no formality, um, and there's no time limits on each other. So, um, if you would like to, if we can try and come to some sort of a a group um, motion, I do think that that is beneficial for everybody in our community who is listening, um, and I welcome that uh, recommendation. So, um, if we want to have a look at uh, all the councillors today, should have received Councillor Colash's proposed um, changes. Um, I'm happy if we want to probably go through those one by one. Should I kick off? Madam yeah, Mayor? you shall. Thank you, Councillor Collins. Um, thank you. Um, in point one, um, I, I, I agree with the matter of urgency to erect clear and concise warning signs. I think we've we've probably all come to grips with the fact that uh, those signs are really important. However, I don't think as councillors that we should be we should be um, dictating where those signs go. And I think um, mm. one of our um, speakers, um, Michael Morris, said that, that, that in that regard, we need to have some expert advice on, on, the, on, the, the, you know, on the um, efficiency of these signs and where they go. So I, don't, I think I would cross out all of the, the, um, the locations that Councillor Wheeler has has um, put in here, even though I, you might very well be right, um, Councillor Wheeler, in those in those 
locations, but I think we need to get some, some very, very clear and very expert advice on this. Now, um, in the second point, uh, and th that I think, look, we can we can have, I think we all, we, we could probably all agree, and I hope we all agree, that we need to, to warn people about these dangers. So that I think that's clear. How and the nuanced way we put up signs is for experts, not for us. So I think that's um, hopefully a consensus. Now, I think in the point in point two, sorry, I'll be I'll try to be as brief as I can because I'm I'm sure we all want to um, you know um, get this to be right. Um, we say that we start to commence um, a public education campaign. I thought that it's very difficult for us as a council to do a public education campaign um, for our area. And the reason that I thought that we have to tread carefully here is that the rest of Sydney seems to be promoting natural swimming places as the thing now. We see Parramatta River being open to, to swimming. I know that there's different um, dangers in Parramatta River and it's not really the same, the same thing, but the message that the public are getting is that it's it's okay to swim in natural rivers now if it's if it's a place that's promoted. I mean, even a couple of days ago, I think we saw two state MPs jump into the harbour, presumably, you know, um, presumably as a as a sign that it's safe to do so. So we have a really complex public communication problem. And Whilst our staff is, you know, I mean, you know, we have those, the, the ability to get those messages out, these messages are going to be counteracted outside of our area. So that push-pull of, of that public um, messaging is going to be really hard. I don't think we can tackle that ourselves. I think we shouldn't tackle it ourselves. I think we should try and get maybe some grant funding from the state government to, to try and it, and to help us with this very complex issue. So that's sort of why I don't really agree with um, ha having our own our own public education. Very happy to, when we get the good advice, to put it everywhere and out there and on the socials and et cetera. Um, and the, I guess the, the, the last thing is that I am a bit worried that we are talking down Macquarie Park. Now, Macquarie Park, and I don't, particularly mind if we call it Windsor Beach. I don't think that's dangerous within itself. When, to me, a beach doesn't necessarily mean swimming. To me, a beach means lying around doing nothing, maybe reading my favourite book. But, um, you know, it's about picnicking, it's about open space, and it's about leisure. We have a wonderful public asset in, in Macquarie Park, and we really have, need to still promote that. But I understand we have to make sure that the attraction isn't swimming. The main attraction isn't swimming. So I think we should be a bit careful with who we contact about. And I think point three is, is fine. You know, we contact people saying stop, you know, promoting it as a, as a swimming stop, a swimming spot, but keep promoting it for all of the other wonderful features that it has. And lastly, I wouldn't mind including in the in the in the in the notice of motion that we um, get a report on the feasibility and the uh, effectiveness of putting some sort of exclusion netting. Now, I'm not sure that the the river is is would be it would be appropriate to, to have such a thing in this river. I don't know, but I think we have to do our darndest to try and and make those pleasurable activities of even for for you know people that just want to wade and paddle. If we can do that and make a statement about this is really, you know, the only safe place to swim, but you have to obviously be supervised if you're, you know, da-da-da, all of that. So that's my take on this. Um, thank you for, for listening to me on that one. I absolutely agree that this is an important issue and um, we have to do our utmost to fix it whilst allowing our, our wonderful public asset to, you know, still be frequented. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I'll go back to, oh, I'll, I'll listen to Councillor Lines back at your contribution. Thank you. 
Oh, thank you. It was just regarding the proposed changes at this point. Um, I think, you know, in terms of getting advice on where it's best for the signs, I'm, I'm happy not to specify them, although I do think it would be important uh, to put that it must include multiple areas because as locals, we know the number of ways people will come to that particular spot. So it's not someone from out of the area might not realise that, you know, the entry and entry points to Macquarie Park people can come across the fields they can come around from the other side so I think that's why having them on the actual waterfront would be good but then uh, advice on where to put them I think is a, a, a good thing um, I think in terms of the public education campaign I think that um, I'm not quite sure why we get grant funding. I don't know who from the state government, I don't know why that would change anything uh, unless we had someone who was doing it. But I think that it's really important that we do either tap into the existing information that exists about inland waterways and the risks of that and translate that into a public campaign because essentially this is the issue that we have. People do not understand when they go swimming in a river, the absolute perils of, um, you know, inland waterway swimming. So I think that we should uh, work towards getting a public campaign because the trouble is, and this goes to the use of the Windsor Be Beach uh, terminology, which I would like to see eliminated as per the motion, it is because it gives an interpret, uh, you know, an impression to people that it is an actual beach, and we know it isn't a beach because um, a beach would have various information available about its currents and those sort of things if it were an advertised beach, as it is. So, just for example, today when I was looking. Uh, googling through having a look around Windsor Beach to see what came up there's a number of websites where it says to come swimming out here the closest beaches to Parramatta it's a calm beach on the Hawkesbury River perfect for swimming and fishing um, it, it also mentions Yarramundi Reserve on those ones on escape.com it's a top place for swimming and fishing some of the best Sydney beaches now this goes probably to what Councillor Cotlash was saying that people are promoting going to the beach and healthy lifestyles and all of that and that's of course what we want but we can't really have both because if we can't patrol it and if we can't uh, we can't call it a beach and then not have any of the things that people could access even though I know there's unpatrolled beaches but um, I think if you start to talk about exclusion zones and things like that the only real way you could do that was to actually build a pool, like, for example, on the Georges River, where you go to Cast Park swimming baths or um, Jewfish Bay swimming baths, they have built it because one of the biggest perils with drowning is the going in, the entry and the exit from the river when people slip and suddenly they're in that cold water, as Mr Snedden mentioned, or they're snagged by something. And so when you look at those baths that do exist within rivers, they have proper steps in and out, they have some sort of controlled area around them they're not just a surface edging into a river. So I don't think, and I do think we had raised the netting in previous. Uh, in 2014, Councillor Payne had an urgent motion and we did talk about those things then and it was deemed not really suitable uh, for that type of river um, situation. Um, not that we couldn't look at it again, but I think in terms of the proposed changes, I think the change around the signage would be fine, but I, I really would like to see us do try and do the campaign or work towards the campaign and also to to address the use um, in the wider area of the term Windsor Beach. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Sam Progno. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm broadly supportive of Councillor Wheeler's motion and I find myself uh, in agreement with many of Councillor Cotlash's suggested improvements. I grew up swimming on the river. I swam, swam at Windsor. I used to swim at the famous rope swing at Pitt Town. Of course, it's long since gone. And um, in terms of historical context, I did some digging and found 223 references to drowning at Windsor uh, through Trove. And Trove itself conks out, you know, only about 20 years ago. The earliest reference, 1806. My own direct ancestor drowned at Windsor in 1809, although that was in the time of flood. Curiously, the council was talking about creating a life-saving squad at Windsor in 1944. 
So we've been talking about this for a very, very long time. But more recently, I remember uh, representing the mayor at an event in December 2020, where Raw Life Saving Australia and the Surf Life Savers uh, of um, Australia uh, did a launch at Macquarie Park as a reflection of the loss of, at that point in December 2020, 10 lives lost within the preceding five year period. Obviously, a very serious issue. There was no suggestion that council ought to have any role in signage, enforcement. Uh, public education or otherwise. It was acknowledged as something that sat above our tier. But I do agree with Councillor Wheeler that as the manager of this space, we do have something of a responsibility. I think I would prefer in a motion something that addresses some of the deficiencies that were addressed by the speakers. So if, the, if there's some deficiency in our existing signage in the sense that we're not using internationally recognised best practice in the symbology of our signing, and if we don't kick people in the teeth by saying, by the way, people have drowned here recently and this is the number. I think that's very arresting. I think something that's universally acknowledged as a sign of peril is a human skull. So you put a skull on a sign and say that there's a significant lethal hazard here, people ought to get the message. But I don't want to frighten away, frighten away people from what is a significant natural asset, as Councillor Kotlash said, from not coming here at all. I mean, in um, February 2018, I went down uh, uh, as a guest of the Scouts on their Founders Day, and there were kids splashing around in Macquarie Park at the beach there, playing on rafts that had been lashed together out of barrels and drums and so forth. The significant difference, of course, and I looked at the video recently, was that every one of those kids had a life preserver on, mm. and they were closely supervised by responsible adults. And that isn't enough to guarantee their safety, but it goes a long way. I think in the long run, I think instead of trying to scare people away from this locality altogether, we should look at our long-term planning to see if there are ways in which we could make it safer for people to enjoy the water in that locality, whether it's through building baths or some kind of an enclosure that would be relatively flood resilient, that would provide a safer space, whether it's by marking out clearly where that drop off is, because it's a rock shelf, it's not a silted shelf. So, you know, there's a safe place and an unsafe place. There's a current and then there's the still water where it would be safe to go to a degree. I don't see that in the current motion or its proposed amendments, but I do support it as a good step a first step in that direction. Thank you, Councillor. Was anyone else wanting to make a contribution? Otherwise, I'll say something quickly. Oh, yep, Councillor Sheetha. Yeah, thanks, Pat. <laughs> um, the question is not to detract from, from anything the speakers have said, but we're talking about responsibility. Uh, it's Crown land and waterways and council. Where does our role as a council finish or is it amalgamated with with uh, other government departments in relation to hazards such as this thank you councillor general manager um through you madam mayor uh, i think councils what we're dealing with here is clearly um a really obviously very serious and, and, and complex problem and i'm not sure at this point that a discussion around public liability is probably the conversation to be to be having at this point if, if I can be frank um I think it's a conversation that um you know even as council as a council as a government entity um has a responsibility certainly um I, I think if for no other reason than um even if we take away aside our legal responsibilities um I, I certainly think that there's a moral and ethical obligation for us to do everything in, in our um power that we, that we can to make the safest the side as safe as possible thank you general manager councillor Sheva. oh yeah, okay thank you very much uh deputy mayor Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I support the motion and the, the whole idea of an education campaign, but we had an education campaign of sorts back in two, 2018. It wasn't an extensive one. There was a few press releases put out and uh, uh, a person was brought in from life, a surf life-saving and another person from the... Red Cross, I think, to talk on the local radio. And there were a few things done at the time, but my point is that 
that was only affecting people who were listening at that point. Mm -hmm. And this motion um, seems to suggest we have a, a public education campaign as a, a one-off, whereas what I think we would need to look at is a an ongoing education campaign every year. Every swimming season, there needs to be something put out to say, last year so many people drowned in our river and etc. Um, so I would I urge the move of the motion to think about changing that to an ongoing education campaign. The the one that was we had in two thousand and eighteen and others in in the past have mostly been centered on boating safety because um, when people fall off boats and water skis, it tends to get more more um, public um, attraction, more people listen to those stories. But as we all know, the, the, big, the biggest killer is not the boats. It's these areas like Windsor where people just fall in and get dragged into the cold current and can't get out again. And uh, that's, I think, that we need to make sure the public education campaign doesn't get hijacked by the boating people again. But we need to make sure it sticks to the issue we've got here, which is people on the river bank going in when they shouldn't be going in. And also, um, people don't just drown on Windsor Beach. They drown in other places along the river. And uh, our campaign should, by saying, it, don't swim at Windsor Beach because you might drown, they'll think, oh, okay, I won't go there. I'll go up the road a bit, and that's okay. We need to be make make it quite clear that the whole river is dangerous in, in Pitt Town, in Sackville, all those places. It's a dangerous place to go swimming. And so I'd like to see any education campaign do that as well. I was in Wollongong just last week, and I was at a beach, and I... There was a sign there and I took a photo. I should have sent it to everyone, I suppose. It's a place called Pucky's Beach. And it says, warning, swimming at this location may result in drowning. And then it's got another bit with all these signs under it saying, um, you know, it's, the water might be polluted, submerged objects. It's a whole range of things. This is from Wollongong Council. And down the bottom, Pucky's Beach is unsafe for swimming once again. So I, I would think that that, stand, that sign might be a standard sort of sign that we can get hold of. It's quite, it's quite big. It is only in English, but I think down the bottom there's a QR code that people can go onto and get different languages from it. So maybe I should send that around to everyone. But um, whatever the sign is, I would I would think it should not say, not pull any punches. I think it needs to be very direct and very and say, look, if you if you jump in here, you, the big chance you'll drown and make it very clear. Um, and I think that's what Councillor Wheel is trying to do, make it very clear to people, make it very strong. And the stronger we can make it, the better. But, but my main, main argument is that the education campaign needs to be not just a one-off, but a, an ongoing campaign for the whole river and not just about boating. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Any other contributions? Councillor Wheeler? Um, thanks, Madam. I'm just putting some words together. I was just going so to say, I can see you typing furiously. I'm, I'm happy to listen to any further contributions. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to put some words together for the staff before I address the Lovely, because I think if something raised. can go up, um, that would be good. Are you, what you're typing, are you taking into consideration Councillor Kotlash's amendment? I'm taking into consideration Councillor Cotton. Uh, Sorry, not amendment, um, um, proposal. Um, yes, um, uh. words, um, Councillor Zampronio's points, um, Councillor Lyons Bucket, and also the speakers, I hope. Lovely, thank you. May I add, um, uh, listening to this debate, and this is not my commentary yet, just in terms of the motion, could we actually add a point one that addresses something that's already in train? And that point one um, is that Council has engaged Royal Life Saving New South Wales in 2018 and 2021 and has done so again now at the beginning of 2023. Um, none of this motion addresses that very important part that a lot of people are coming to me as the mayor in the community and saying, are you getting that expert advice? So I think that we do need to probably point one, say, yes, we have engaged to seek that expert advice. Are you happy to make that point one? Just yeah, council has engaged Royal Life Saving New South Wales in 2018 and 2021 
and has done so again now in 2023. Uh, I think the actual wording as per the management uh, note is to undertake a, a new safety assessment of the site. I think it's important that our motion reflects that that, that has already um, occurred. Um, so that was my additional point there. Um, the other thing to take into consideration, I'm not sure what your thoughts are uh, on the netting. Um, I, before I talk about the netting, I do just want to, to say that the general manager and myself went and met with a, um, a member very connected um, to one of the drownings over this summer yesterday. Um, I think that was absolutely important and vital for both of our understanding in terms of um, our two roles in the community uh, in moving forward. And uh, I'm not going to ever uh, identify, but I do know um, that that individual is listening right now. And I thank her for her contribution and her fairness uh, and her rawness in communicating to Liz and I, oh, sorry, the general manager and I, um, thoughts and feelings in regards to being so closely connected um, to one of these circumstances. Um, that brings me back to Councillor Cotlash's point about the net and uh, the netting situation was raised. And everyone I've spoken to so far about the netting situation, um, I do this, it, it's a balancing of priorities because Deputy Mayor, you've rightly touched on the fact and so have other speakers that the signs need to impact. They need to be powerful. They need to not um, beat around the bush. They need to say people have drowned here. It's as simple as that. Um, and I know from discussions already that people have come to me and said, well, your current signage says unsupervised children have drowned here. Mm -hmm. um, and it does because, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, General Manager, in our last assessment, that was the wording we were told from the experts needed to be said. Um, we now know that as community members here in the Hawkesbury, that can, those words need to be stronger. And I, I'm pleased that the staff have engaged to get that um, up to date and current advice already. Um, so on the issue of netting, on one hand, we're going to have this powerful, impactful signage that says people have drowned here, which I agree with. And then we have this netting, which I also agree with in a way, because if they're going to swim there anyway, regardless, because as other speakers and councillors have said, people take risks. We can't stop people taking risks. We can only alert them to the risks. Um, is having the netting there uh, an important aspect to therefore, um, while we don't have everybody's eyes there, that there's something there. Um, and if that netting is going there, given the fact that we have had six floods in under three years, a significant shifting of sands and collection of debris uh, along our entire river, um, that part that if we do, with expert advice, decide upon netting would have to be cleared by whatever relevant agency, the SES, um, whatever it may be, that there was no debris. So I, I, I think the motion needs to touch on that, um, to have the netting included in it, to go to the experts to say yes or no to that. That's, I don't think we're qualified, um, none of us here, to say yes or no to that. We have to go to the experts. Um, I'm still going to continue, but I'm happy to um, hear your point on that, Councillor. I just Collage. wanted to, to just say that I had... No, I, I, I don't have any idea whether netting is a good idea I don't think any not. of us do. I guess it's just some sort of exclusion. Is it possible to do something so people can Correct. use that? I don't know, you know, even if it's to put their big toe in. I don't. I know. I agree with you. Uh, That's why I think it needs to be in the motion. So maybe just exclusion uh, facilities or something yeah. without necessarily being netting because I can imagine that that would be flood debris nightmare but anyway thank you no yeah thank you and I, I think we have to have it there because who are we to include or exclude so let, let's let the experts um at Royal Life Saving New South Wales or whoever it may be make that decision um so while you're typing there Councillor Wheeler um I, I don't know what your thoughts are on the netting that was my thoughts um I nowhere in here as well mentions the term life jackets I think somewhere we need to mention life jackets um and as I've said to many people no expert here, but as someone who's grown up on the river, has my kids growing up on the river, they don't go in without a life jacket. And I think that, but locally, a lot of people know that, but out of the area, a lot of people don't, hence back to the education piece. Um, but I think we need somewhere in there, Councillor Wheeler, to mention, even if it is on the signage, the recommendation is to wear life jackets um, because it is uh, that dark shifting water. Um, if you can have a scan while I'm still talking, about where we can add that um, in your on your computer, that would be great. Um, the other thing I would like to add into your motion, Councillor, is 
um, and this was touched on yesterday in mine and the general manager's discussion, was additional life-saving equipment. Oh, she's moved from her computer. <laughs> so, okay. Okay. Um, so uh, in my discussions with Madeline, uh, I can see she's still online and if she's listening, and of course our other two speakers here tonight who I thank for their valuable um, and very raw um, contributions tonight, uh, those additional life-saving um, uh, I would like to have a point saying, yes, we have the two there now, and, and that is great that we have those two, but why not have four or six? Um, so I'd like to make a point about putting in additional um, flotation devices um, along the banks of the river there. And I'm just seeing if there's anything else that I've made note of here. Oh, in point three, where it talks about um, contacting relevant agencies, I would like that to be amended to the mayor, the mayor rights to the relevant agencies, I think it's very important. It doesn't matter if it's me or anyone else who's the mayor. I think it's important the message comes from the mayor, um, that the leader of our community is saying this is what we want. Um, and so uh, I do like that we've included Sydney Water, Tourism New South Wales, mapping sites. Um, in considerable amounts of research done online, it is mentioned in so many other places. Uh, I know for a fact, last only last year, I think it was, I'm I think it was the Daily Telegraph, sorry, Daily Telegraph, if it wasn't you, but there was a publication that did the top 10 beaches in New South Wales. Within the top 10 beaches, every location was an actual coastal beach, except what was called Windsor Beach. Our river was in that top 10. We were the only non-coastal beach in that um, assessment. So I think it is important to uh, get that out there. Um, the other points I want to make uh, is to, of course, mention on the record that uh, this year uh, you'll see the signage down there. I've gone and taken a look. Um, the additional signage, and I thank the staff for their prompt response and just to confirm that those signs are made in-house here in council. Um, so there is that ability to make that. Um, that response was swift, and I thank you for getting those additional, I think it's seven now locations um, down at Macquarie Park, uh, and I thank you for getting that. And I've gone, as I said, down and had a look, and I, if anyone else does, you will see they stand out. They really, really do stand out, um, that high visual yellow. I know the wording. We all want to work on the wording. Um, but that visual yellow is clearly like, what are all these yellow signs? Um, and I do want to thank the staff for moving very quickly on that. Uh, I think as I've touched on the fact that we've had the floods, and I think that's important because, um, you know, I came to the Hawkesbury in 1992. So for almost 30 years, we didn't have a flood. Our river and not just the Hawkesbury, but the Colo and our other tributaries, uh, especially down at Yarramundi and Navua, they looked the same for decades. And then all of a sudden they are now, we don't even know what they, you know, they, they're a mess because of what the river and mother nature has done. We have no idea what's going on underneath. Um, so we have to be very uh, uh, aware of all of that. Um, I do like the fact that we have, uh, are working on coming to some sort of agreement in this motion. Um, I'm happy to pass now over to Councillor Wheeler to see if we can get something up on the board and that we can actually um, have a vote on this. Councillor Malines Bucket. Uh, before we go out of committee in the whole, and um, I just, I'm just starting to find it really contradictory this motion, I'm just really wondering if we shouldn't segregate the bit about the signage and the urgent do now get on with it bit as one motion and then commit to further discussions because a lot of this sort of stuff that's going into getting expert advice and getting grants and looking at flooding around things and all of that, it's going to be slow. I would hate to see it tied up with all the other stuff because essentially we can't be saying on the one hand it's really dangerous you might die and then on the other hand promoting that we're looking at at other things which of course we can do but we should do separately that's that's a good point so um we could potentially and I'm <laughs> Councillor Wheeler's not listening. Because we um, don't want we, Councillor Wheeler to be we idle. We could make point one as a, uh, can I just check with the general manager about the wording? You, you can see the consensus here for powerful wording. Can we make something now or does it need an approval from a um, a body like Royal Life Saving New South Wales? Um, through you, Madam Mayor, oh, it would be my strong suggestion that we're at the 17th of January. Um, for the sake of, of perhaps only a few weeks, um, I would much rather talk to Royal Life about and get and seek their their guidance and input um, on signage um, before it's implemented. Um, having regard to um, both their expertise um, and the input and advice um, from the evidence base, 
that we know that, for example, the local area command have about the incidents of the drownings that have actually occurred. So um, it would be my preference um, and my advice to certainly hold off um, for the sake of for the sake of several weeks um, in order to get that to get that advice. Thank you, General Manager. Um, Based on that, I'm not sure where we want to go, but if something's coming up on, up on the board, I'd appreciate if we could do that and then we can um, tidy it up and jump out of committee of the whole and, and go to a vote. Madam I'll just... Mayor. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yes, Councillor Kotlash. That's all right. Um, can I just say that we're making a big assumption that the signage, that signage works? I mean, you know, we have to, I think we have to have a kind of, um, <coughs> if if we can if we can do it maybe the the urgent activity is to get um some people to patrol the beach in times of of heavy usage if that's you know if that's um if that is what we can do we're assuming that we're putting a lot of um a lot on signage and we don't know that it it will be that effective yet Thank you, Councillor. So Council we have to be mindful. Sorry. Thank you. Councillor Connolly. Thank you. Um, I actually agree with Councillor Lyons Bucket that I think a lot of this is knee-jerk reaction to recent events. Um, I think that there's I, I would be quite happy to support points one and three from the original motion, um, which is these are the things we have to do right now. Um, and then actually have time to have a considered response to everything else. Yeah. Um, it is contradictory. And that's something we have to grapple with. We, I think it's correct, though, that we can say right now it's not safe to be there. We need to make that perfectly clear. Um, whilst council can also look at what we could do in the future to make it safe, they don't have to be, we don't have to fix this issue tonight. Um, I think what we have to fix tonight is to make sure that no one goes down there that we haven't told it's not a good idea. That's all we can do. Um, so I'd be, I don't know what everyone else thinks, but I'd be more inclined to not have the seven or eight point motion um, that tries to do everything, but instead just go back to the original motion, take out um, take out point um, two, which I think we can we can work on later, even point four, I don't mind. Um, but point two, I think, is where we have maybe have some difference of opinion about what that looks like. But points one, three, and four are urgent. We can do really easily. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Connolly. Uh, Councillor Sheba. Yeah, thanks, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> um, my, my question in relation to responsibility wasn't about insurance or claims. It was about um, uh, the perhaps um, uh, collaboration with other organisations to, to resolve a problem. Um, the waterways, for instance, they're responsible uh, for the navigational areas of waterways and dangerous areas. <clears throat> um, it, it, I don't. I haven't been in the water there for some time. Certainly not since the last floods. I don't know the drops off quick or whether there was other reasons why why, why these events happen. Um, but if if the area is uneven, and that's a problem, um, the 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 um, the signs and all that sort of it won't stop people from swimming there. Um, they go there for a swim um, with, with boating. Life jackets are essential. And, because you can be flung out of a boat. Though. When you when you go and paddle in the water, um, you're going in knee deep or neck deep. Uh, people don't wear jackets. <clears throat> so it's fairly impractical to stand there telling people they've got to wear jackets. Uh, you go, go to Bondi and try it. <clears throat> they take everything off there. So um, if there's a problem with the water, uh, well, the base of the water, um, then fix it. That's what the, um, if it's uneven sand, it's not a big area. We're not talking about half the river. We're talking about maybe 100 metres. Um, and that could be <coughs> engineered to to, um, to make it safe. And it'll change in the next flood, probably back to what it is again, if that's the problem. <clears throat> but but if, if dropping off into deep water quickly is the problem, then fix that problem. Um, and, and then people can walk out. And if they only expect to go knee deep and finish up up their neck, that won't happen. So, and and with supervision and the like, um, as our speakers indicated, um, there's there's usually people around. Very people swim on their own. Um, and and um, again with the boat fraternity that <coughs> the deputy mayor spoke of, um, it's. Different people don't expect to get wet. They're in vessels or the likes, and they're with other people. And if someone falls out of the boat, you instantly know about it. Swimming's not the case. 
you go there and you turn your back for two seconds and someone's not there. And, and there can be a whole heap of incidents why that happens. But if we're looking at resolving a problem over there, <clears throat> the signs, and I think they need to be graphic. When you first mentioned it, I, I, I emailed through to you and said just that. Um, so warning signs are one thing. The, the, as Councillor Zambrogno indicated, skull and crossbones, you don't have to, <clears throat> it doesn't matter what country you come from or what language you speak, skull and crossbones is bad news. Um, and, it, and it makes people aware. <clears throat> but again, getting back, to, um, if we're looking at resolving things, uh, nets in the river won't work. That, that, that's there's a keep predators out not to keep people in um the the um <clears throat> but if the bottom of the river is uneven and that's the problem over the small area we're looking at it's not a big deal thank you very much councillor councillor jurek online yeah thanks very much um i'd like to chime in just briefly i haven't, I haven't got a lot to say i'm very supportive um firstly i want to say that uh, i'm in support of uh, uh, life jackets they're for an adult they start at 15 bucks a bcf it's not a great expense and i think it's a good recommendation and i also want to make people aware that um people think dipping a toe in isn't swimming they might think walk along and it's knee deep um these this bank shifts uh, and a great danger is in the first three meters along the water's edge where a large portion of the bank will shift and it'll suck you under i've spoken to people who have nearly drowned there through shifting sands uh, and their opinion was that being further out was safer um, when it comes to shifting sands. So, so dipping a toe could, could potentially be dangerous, and I'm just throwing that out there for consideration. I'm not trying to direct it in any, in any way. But, uh, yeah, thanks. That's all I want to say, really. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. Okay, Councillor Wheeler, I can see it's um, all of the points have basically been included that we've discussed tonight. Um, if you don't mind, before I hand over to you, based on what Councillor Connolly said, um, it's probably a good idea to swap three and four because... Madam Mayor, can I just, oh, sorry. Can I just jump in? Yeah. Um, I, what I've done now is draft a short version of this, which um, I think what we've done here is encapsulate this evening's discussion, which gives us a good point to work from with the next round. Um, and and so I've so I've written a shorter motion, which is much more similar to the initial one with um, a couple of changes to some of the points, if we could have that. Oh, so this is, oh, okay, here we go. Yeah, so uh, so yeah. Your, your first point, um, noting that Council has um, engaged in some activity to date, um, that we look at that we do the warning signs as a as a matter of urgency that we contact relevant agencies and ask them to stop using the term Windsor Beach and then we refer this matter to a councillor workshop for further action so that we can deal with those those additional non-urgent um, matters including the public education campaign I would prefer to see us embarking on the public education campaign um, very quickly uh, but I agree it needs to be um, it needs to be done well in the meantime if we can at the very least stop talking about um, the, the spot as a beach uh, and be very clear for anybody who does turn up thinking that it's a swimming hole um, that that it's that it's not a safe place then if they choose to engage with it as a swimming spot then we we have at least pointed out the risk yeah that that's a, a lot um, more concise and and I think if that in point two though just back to my point on life jackets um, can we add as a matter of urgency a Rex's clear and concise warning sign in several locations um, sign should plainly state it can be dangerous to swim at this site um, and include uh, as well as recommending the wearing of life jackets the the, pr the problem I think is that that it gives a contradictory message so if I've got a life jacket on I'm safe I grew up with my with a father in the royal uh, in the coastal patrol we spent a lot of time fishing people out of Sydney Harbour who had life jackets on who drowned wearing life jackets or who had non-fatal drowning accidents wearing life jackets you only need a blow to the head or a little bit of time you can drown in a glass of water you know you don't you don't need to be in a thumping big river to drown. You can drown in the bath, you can drown in a glass of water, you can drown with a net, you can drown with a life jacket on, particularly if you're wearing a vest and not a jacket with a with a buoyancy device that goes around the back of your neck, which is what most people wear, unfortunately. Um, so I think until I think the the life jackets, I appreciate that they do that they do add to, to people's buoyancy and safety. Um, but but I think they're part of the next suite the of discussions That's that we fine. have. Fine. Um Perhaps the councillor workshop, if you don't mind adding to that, to be held in um, 
February. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and just for anyone um, who is watching our meeting online, our first council meeting back is the 31st of January, our first official meeting. Um, so if we can have this um, as soon as possible in February, um, I think that that gives a timeline. Uh, okay, that looks like a way forward. Is there any other contributions to be made by councillors this evening? Are Mary, moving, oh, sorry, Councillor, are we Lange moving back into regular? Uh, yes, I, before we do, yes, um, which will be the next procedural motion. If yep. no, everyone else is. Um, Move that way. Yeah. Councillor Connolly, seconded Councillor Lyons Bucket. Uh, thank you. All in favour? Thank you very much. Uh, we are now back in normal session. Uh, in that regard, if there's no uh, Councillor Lyons Bucket. I would just like to speak briefly to the motion that we came up with, and I think that was a good way forward. Um, I just still think that we really need to uh, reiterate that um, it, we need to take care with not putting out one message and then turning around with another message. So if we've got signs telling people, and we really do need to trigger them when they go there, when they're thinking, will I swim or will I not? It's dangerous. People die. I'm not going to swim. And it really doesn't matter how good a swimmer you are. That's the whole point. Yeah. You can be the best swimmer ever. I'm a good swimmer. I'm also a trained lifesaver, and I would not swim in that particular location. Um I think that uh, Councillor Wheeler, I really thank her for bringing this because we know it is a, re uh, you know, unfortunately and very sadly, it's something that comes up all the time. I think when we look at the calling of the beach, I think that's a really important thing because when we talk about the beach, the lifesavers go down to the beach each day and they look at the currents and they look what's going on and then they position the flags to indicate where it's safe to swim. If we just say this whole area is safe, we're not adjusting for those changing currents and for those variations which we know occur. And I'm looking forward to when we can work for a public uh, campaign because, as Councillor Calvert said, the other one was directed at boating and as Councillor Sheetha says boating is a different situation people who go boating generally know about water safety and things as well and it's much different but what we need to do is we need to reach out somehow to these many sites on social media that are promoting people to come here and swim yeah. safely uh, when it isn't safe I mean even if they're going to say to come out here and of course people can still utilize the park but that doesn't mean it's a beach I think if they're going to say to come out here, they at least should be having a disclaimer that it's not not a beach that's safe or patrolled. It doesn't say any of that. It just says it's a calm beach and it is not. So I think that it'll be really important uh, to work on that. And it is risky all the way along the river, but not everywhere is as easily accessible. People come up from uh, Blacktown, people come up from the hills and they come straight up a road and they see what looks like an area where you could go swimming. And that is enticing on a hot day for people, often people who are non-English speaking, people who can't swim. If you can't swim, don't, don't go into a river because you can't paddle in a river like you might be able to paddle in a little pond or something because you might fall in. And I think inevitably on this issue, we are going to have to take a decision. Are we going to take steps to make it a safe swimming space, in, in which case we would have to build infrastructure around that and put money into that, or are we going to deter people from coming to swim there? Because that's really the choice we've got if we want to hold people's safety as a priority um, in this particular area. So um, I think that it's good that we're working towards it and uh, there's all the various material around the, the perils of inland waterways and I think we need to sort of um, go through in our briefing and go over all that stuff and see what else we can do but this is certainly a good start. Thank you. Thank you Councillor Lyons Bucket. I just need to note that under the Code of Meeting Practice when we do come out of a, a committee of the whole the General Manager does need to uh, report on the record what occurred during that process. Thank you. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, whilst in Committee of the Whole, the committee discussed a number of matters in relation to swimming safety at Macquarie Park. Um, these included signage, um, including location and content, community education, um, naming terminology, um, the provision of, ex of um, exclusive netting um, and the wearing of life jackets. Um, the committee made a, rec a recommendation that Council 1 notes that Council has engaged Royal Life Saving New South Wales in 2018 and 2021 and has done so again in 2023 to undertake a new safety assessment of the site. 
Two, as a matter of urgency, erects clear and concise warning signs at several locations in Macquarie Park, including on the sand bank of the river. Signs should plainly state that it can be dangerous to swim at the site and include languages and other than English and international symbols for risk of drowning. Additional warnings about strong currents, shifting sands, debris, pollution, lack of supervision should be included, but must not detract from the main message that swimming at this site is extremely dangerous. Three, request that the Mayor contact other relevant agencies, including Sydney Water and Tourism New South Wales and Mapping sites like Google Maps, informing them of the dangers of this site and asking them not to promote it as a swimming site or use the term Windsor Beach. And four, refer the matter to a council workshop to be held in February 2023 for further action. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, General Manager. Uh, I would just like to thank uh, all councillors tonight for their contribution. I think that uh, on such a very sensitive uh, issue, we've been able to conduct this debate in a respectful way and come up with a resolution that we appear to all be happy with. And I want to thank you very much uh, for your contributions. Uh, and I know that, again, I've said this, there are people listening tonight, and I do want to express uh, that myself as the Mayor and Council as a whole, and on behalf of everybody, um, our deepest condolences for your loss. Uh, but as people elected to this body to do the very best for our community, uh, I hope that tonight you can see that that is or, and always will be our absolute intention. Uh, before I hand to Councillor Wheeler for right of reply, um, I will just mention there was something touched on in the longer motion that was taken out, and that is, and Madeline uh, Healy touched on it tonight in her speech, um, the importance of getting a first aid certificate. If I can just stress that to people as one last message before we leave, um, and again, our, our council seems to be a little bit ahead of the game here because they have advertised in the last couple of weeks um, free first aid certificate courses. I've signed up for the one at Oakville on the 4th of Feb. Um, it's something I've never done in my life, but um, I firmly believe that it's vitally important to have that qualification. And I do want to thank um, whoever it is in our council um, who has made that a priority to provide that to our community uh, to say thank you. And if you have the ability, please look at the dates and please sign up. I did check yesterday. There are still availabilities at a couple of our other locations. Um, so please do so. Um, Madam, sorry, yes. could I just ask you on that point for clarification? Are there going to be more courses? Because I've had some requests from the public about, uh, because the ones I think are all over this side. Uh, it's Oakville, there's, there's Yarramundi, and there's North Richmond. I thought it was Moray. Oh, it, it might be Moray, but I mean, oh, yeah. I'm thinking okay, that's so that area. Was, no, I just had a couple of questions, and if there are going to be more, uh, just so we know when people ask, but there's still vacancies in those ones. I got told yesterday correct? through the coordinator there's still vacancies at Yarramundi, and I wasn't sure. There was somewhere else. I'm not sure of the okay. second location. Um, I think um, Oakville and Moralia was full, but the other locations still had vacancies, um, but they are conducted in conjunction with the Australian Red Cross, I think it yes. is. So uh, very official and, and, and very formal and very necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, right of reply, Councillor Wheeler. Thanks, Madam Mayor, and I thank you for raising um, the matter of first aid certificate. Um, it's a really, really important life skill. I've said that before in this chamber when we've discussed um, the lack of ambulance services, particularly west of the river. Uh, 40 minutes is a long time to stand beside someone who's dying if you don't know what to do. Um, it's the same on the river. There, I, I can think of, I've been trained in first aid since I was a child because um, my, my father was an ambulance officer and it was just drummed into me um, and I my son did his first first aid certificate at 14 this is a really essential life skill um, if you if you have children who are old enough to, to understand what to do in a situation and most kids over the age of about eight or nine are um, get them into some training get yourself into some training it's really important and I'm really pleased to see council offering it um, and I and I hope we continue adult swim safety I think is another area that we we, we run fantastic swimming lessons at our at our our pools um, they're really well used um, they're, they're very affordable um, I'd love to see us rolling out some adult swim safety classes as well Councillor Wheeler, before you continue, as a matter of process, yes, you need to correct. remove the new motion thank you yes. um, I will move the new motion um, <laughs> and, uh, sorry. and just put a seconder on the record Councillor Lyons Bucket thank you very much um, and look, I, I want to thank everyone for their contribution. I think this shows the power of us moving into Committee of the Whole. We've had a really fulsome discussion, I think, and we've now come up with some short-term um, actions and something that we can discuss um, next month to, to move on fairly rapidly. I think we need to remember that summer is really only just getting started out here. We've had a pretty slow start to summer um, and we've got a good couple of months of hot weather, including Australia Day, where we will probably see a lot of people in the river. Um, 
and certainly on the on the edge of the river. Um, I want to acknowledge Councillor Durick's point that it's really easy to get into trouble really quickly <coughs> in a spot of the river that you think is perfectly safe. This is a huge dynamic body of water. Um, there is a reason why the Durick people don't swim in this river um, at that point uh, because and it's and it's really just a simple matter of geography um, we we need to understand the country that we're living on um, I think speed is of the essence here um, <coughs> I think we also need to make sure um, and I'm glad that we've resolved to to have signage that's in other than languages other than English um, and that includes international symbol for symbols for drowning risks we promote the Hawkesbury as a tourism um, site and to do that we we have to acknowledge that not everybody who comes here um, is an English speaker and is used to Australian conditions um, I, I think we we also um, we also need to be really mindful of 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 the way we market this this site and I think we've had a useful discussion about what people understand by the term beach and when you look in other areas of Sydney um, to see this site um, the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Lyons Bucket and Councillor Kotlash and I attended a Sydney water um, workshop ar and around um, around water use um, and one of the points that they were raising was swimmability in rivers and one of the things that they what they had a night, couple of pages in their shiny brochure about river swimmability um and you know and i note that you know they've opened up bits of barangaroo and parts of you know the Parramatta river are, are now clean enough to swim in and that's great but that's not the hawkesbury that is that's a puddle in comparison to this river i spent my teenage years um, kayaking on the Parramatta river and thought nothing of it it's a much more gentle body of water particularly at the at the mouth than it than than the Hawkesbury is. Um, it's not the same game. Uh, and we, I pointed out to Sydney Water during that meeting that we did not condone people swimming at Windsor um, and we and that this site was really dangerous. Now, this was before these, these latest two men drowned um, and and they had, they had a lovely picture of, of Windsor, of yeah, the, the beach area at Macquarie Park. Um, and, and I asked them to take it out of the brochure, not because we don't want people to come to Macquarie Park, but because we don't want people to drown in that river. Um, and, and I think we need to make sure that other agencies, while it's great, while it would be lovely to get the river clean enough to take a dip in, Windsor is not the spot for, for that activity. Uh, and I think it's, it behoves us as the, as the managers of that site to make that information really clear. If people choose to swim there, we can't stop them, but we can make sure that they make informed decisions uh, when, they, when they choose to engage in activities at that site, the same way that they would at one of our playgrounds or any other um, area that council manages. So I thank you for your support. I particularly, again, want to thank the people who have um, either contacted me or the, and, the, and also the speakers tonight for their generosity. Thank you. Thank you, councillor. I'll now put the motion as it appears on the board. All those in favour, please raise your hand. In favour, uh, councillor Reardon, councillor Weigel, councillor Sheather, councillor Connolly, councillor Kotlash, councillor Calvert, Councillor Lyons Bucket, Councillor Wheeler, Councillor Zamprogno, Councillor McMahon, and online Councillor Ju. Oh, he had his hand up. Sorry, yes. And I, I just need to see it. Councillor Jurek, can you raise your hand if you're in support? Can you hear me? Okay, he can't hear me, but I'm going to take your word. Councillor Jurek. Sorry, I dropped out. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for supporting that. Uh, and absent is Councillor Dog uh, I thank councillors for their unanimous support in a very important community matter. Uh, and I thank everyone for their contributions to this debate. I now